What's up everyone? It's Matt HD. Uh, welcome to the uh, instructions video for uh, bootcampdrivers.com to uh, install the custom uh, graphics drivers for your Macintosh. Um, so before we get started, if you plan on using an eGPU as a quick heads up, make sure you're using an older version of Windows 10. Um, namely version 1903 um, the newest version as a time writing is 1909 and that version does not work with eGPU so you need to be installing an older version um, of Windows 1903 is the version you need there's a link in the description down below um, secondly um, if you enjoy this video make sure you hit the like button and uh, another thing is to subscribe to the channel so you can see the latest uh, videos that I'll be releasing uh, in the meantime though, uh, let's get started with the instructions on how to install the driver. Alright, cool. So, assuming you're already at the uh, website bootcampdrivers.com, um, you can visit it by visiting bootcampdrivers.com if you're not, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, so, um, all the downloads are available in the uh, top left here. <clears throat> so, you can see we have one for Windows 10. Um, we have ones for legacy Macs, which means any Mac that's older than or was released before the year 2013. Um, so you may have some older graphics cards, the old uh, Radeon 6000 series, for example, um, in like the iMac from like 2010. So actually, those are also supported um, with a slack. Well, basically, it's what's called a version modification. So. Uh, it's still the old driver because the newest drivers um, aren't designed for the older graphics cards, different architecture. Um, so what it does is it just changes the version number so at least the newer games um, will at least try to run. So you can technically open um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare for example with this driver. It's just whether or not it will actually work once you're in the game. But at least you have that option there. Uh, Windows 10, so the top one, this is the one most people are going to be interested in, um, particularly the 2020 drivers, if you have one of the new MacBook Pros with 16 inch uh, screen, um, and there's different versions here, so um, you'll be interested in the latest ones, which should be the sort of top ones, and uh, the top, you can see this one is ja Adrenaline January 2020, um, so every single month there'll be a new version out. Um, and that month uh, will be the, the latest sort of version, if you like. Uh, and it'll be based on one of AMD's um, monthly, uh, well, one of AMD's releases um, during that month. In the case of January 2020 edition, for example, this is based on 20.1.2. Um, so the three versions, you have your red gaming edition, uh, you have a red version 2 gaming edition, and you have a blue Enterprise Edition. You may be asking, well, what's the difference? Uh, so the red, the normal Red Gaming Edition, I say normal, um, the version 1 of the Red Gaming Edition um, has some FPS boosts, little tweaks in the uh, driver installation code to um, help improve um, your FPS. Now, um, it's normally quite small. Uh, sometimes it's only about, say, 3 to 5. But it also does little things like uh, try and improve um, textures and speed up rendering in, in your games as well. The only issue with this version is that it can cause problems with emulators. So the emulators, um, for whatever reason, um, actually lose frames per second using this version. Um, and some benchmarking software, for example, and non-gaming software um, doesn't actually work properly due to the tweaks, which is why we have gaming version 2. So red version 2, this is the version to use. Uh, it's a little bit more sort of stock, if you like, compared to version 1. This is the one to use if you plan on using emulators and some sort of non-gaming software and benchmarking tools. Uh, and then you have the blue Enterprise Edition, which is designed for... Uh, scientific sort of computing uh, and it also happens to be the best version um, to use with your MacBook Pro 16 inch um, and with any sort of uh, Radeon Pro uh, series graphics cards mainly the 560, 570, 580 and 555 uh, series also including the X variants of those graphics cards uh, so in our case today uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clicking on the version 2 edition. 
um, and we'll just wait for uh, the link to load. So we click download. See, it's downloading now, so you should get a decent sort of speed. Um, some countries do block uh, this um, file host. Um, for example, China. You're best using a VPN if that's the case. If you find that this host is blocked in your country, um, using a VPN should uh, overcome this issue. Um, so, just waiting on this to, to finish downloading. Uh, to be fair, I already have the file myself, so I can probably just pause it. But in your case, it will download to your computer. Uh, and then what we want to do... So, this is the version of interest. Uh, so, it'll look like this. Windows 10 Radiant Software should appear in your downloads folder. Um, what you're going to do is you want to extract device driver uninstaller. Um, just extract it to your current location if you want. I don't see the, po the problem with that. Um, you can see that's now extracted. So what we need to do is to um, we go down here onto your start menu. Press the power button. Press restart. But while you're doing that, you need to hold the shift key. So there's the shift key. So you just press that and hold that and click restart. Once you've held down the shift key as you hit restart, you should get this blue screen. Click troubleshoot. Click advanced options. And then we go to startup settings. And then we hit restart. So once you've restarted your computer, um, you'll have the startup settings option here. And all we need to do, you can see it says press the number to choose from the options below. So we want enable safe mode. So we literally just, all we do, we press the number four on the keyboard and then we boot into a Windows. Okay, so we're back on the desktop in safe mode. Um, basically safe mode is just, if you've never heard of it, um, it's a, a way of still entering and using Windows 10 if you have sort of say driver, uh, driver issues with Windows 10, um, which is stopping you from booting up normally, for example, or if you've done something with the uh, registry. So it's just another way of being able to try and fix any problems you've got with Windows 10. But in our case, we're using this to uh, uninstall the driver packages, um, the AMD driver packages. Um, right, so enter the DDU folder that you extracted before, now that we're in safe mode. Um, so we open display driver uninstaller. And you'll get this little notification, but that's okay. We can just dismiss that. Um, then you'll be presented with this option screen, hopefully. Um, so there's a couple of things you're going to want to tick here. Um, you're going to want to tick this one. Uh, it says not recommended. So basically the AMD driver folder is not re recommended. Actually, um, in our case, the opposite's true. It is recommended. Um, any sort of old drivers you have in here, sometimes Windows can go, oh, um, this is the one you want, and it'll overwrite the drivers that you currently have. So, all the, the drivers that you are about to install, for example. So you want to tick this to make sure that um, the older or any other drivers that you have installed from the um, you know from AMD um, don't actually uh, overwrite our bootcamp drivers one. Um, remove AMD audio bus, you want to do that one as well. Um, and for the first time, you are also going to want to leave the shader cache folder checked. Um, in future, when you're upgrading between uh, bootcamp drivers, um, if you do end up using device driver uninstaller, then untick this. If you're upgrading between bootcampdrivers.com graphics drivers, um, just because otherwise your games will all be uh, rebuilding the caches every time you upgrade. Um, but of course, if you come into issues, uh, then keep this checked. Um, so for the first time, if you're doing this for the first time, leave that checked. And um, let's just see. Prevent download drivers of, of 
prevent downloads of drivers from Windows update. Yeah, so let's do that one as well. Because basically, again, you know, Windows can try and automatically install drivers for you. So, yeah, that's same. That's fine. So we'll click close. Uh, next thing we do, uh, device type. So it's a graphics card, so we want GPU. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to click clean and do not restart. So what we're going to do, we're going to run this three times in a row. And on the third time, we will restart. So let's click clean and do not restart. This might seem a bit odd, but actually, um, on the rare occasion, display driver uninstaller does not clean out the drivers properly. Um, if this is the case, then running it three times rather than once can actually um, sort things. Right, so clean uninstall completed. Would you like to exit now? Just click no. Uh, we'll click this again, clean and do not restart. So this just makes sure that we're completely getting rid of any sort of AMD driver files. And then we're starting with a, a blank sheet because that's what we're going to need. So we're clicking no again. And then click clean and restart for the third time. And then this will restart the computer um, once it is done. So won't bore you with the uh, the restart process um, so there we go and now it's restarting so we'll see you once the computer has restarted again okay so we're back on the desktop again this time we can actually finally go around and um, install the drivers so if we double click on setup and click yes Um, what you're going to need to do as well, if you click down to additional options, click uh, factory reset. If you're upgrading from a previous bootcampdrivers.com edition, you will only need to click this and you will not necessarily need to use device driver uninstaller. So you just tick that box there and then hit um, install if you're using a newer version of bootcampdrivers.com if you want to upgrade for it to a newer version um, if that causes problems then you'll need to do the whole uh, process um, in terms of upgrading your graphics driver do the whole process as per this video um, but in this case yeah we're going to do a factory reset um, here as well just because sometimes um, the graphics drivers might not install. They might um, give an error at the end if we don't do this. So we click install. Uh, should start installing. Uh, so what will happen initially is it's once again uninstalling anything that's left on your machine. Um, and then it uninstalls the graphics drivers, which is why it does that. And then it'll say your system will now restart. So everything looks absolutely massive now on my computer. Um, but yeah, we'll click restart now, which is down in the bottom right there. Um, and then it's going to restart yet again. Okay, so I've just logged in and then immediately you should see the screen appear back once again. This time it will be installing the graphics drivers. So we'll just wait on that one. We'll show you it happening live says it takes nine minutes it doesn't take nine minutes it takes a couple of minutes maximum so installing the display drivers and <coughs> what we can do as well go down here type in device manager And under this, oh, hello. <laughs> under display adapters, you should just have a Microsoft Basic display adapter. Um, once you've uninstalled the drivers, uh, 
and once the display flickers a couple of times we should now see the graphics driver installed. Graphics driver has installed correctly um, and it just says welcome to AMD Raging Software uh, make sure that you don't tick that top one and then launch AMD Radeon Software is ticked so we can do some changes launch Radeon Software welcome to the new Radeon Software uh, we can gonna skip this okay and then we are gonna need to do a few tweaks so if you want to record desktop click record video um, enable that um, and actually it started recording now so um, you can actually press control shift R to stop that um, there we go and it'll tell you where to save to um, not all models not all computers will have this working properly um, again it's something that AMD have to really sort of support um, but it does work uh, absolutely fine on um, on my machine, which is quite old now, M295X. Um, the ones where it might not work are um, some of the ones where actually it works better on the blue edition drivers. So it might not work, uh, Relive um, might not work properly, the recording AMD recording software might not work properly on the 500 series graphics card, so your 555, 560. 570580 including the X variants and also the MacBook Pro 20, 2019 um, with the uh, 16 inch screens so it might not work properly for those um, so yeah once you're in uh, just well let's actually go up here so we've got gaming click gaming um, go to global graphics um, there's different things here that you might want to, um, you know, switch on depending on uh, what you need. Radiant anti lag is usually a good idea. Uh, as is Radiant chill. Um, basically, you know, Max, um, they have a lot of thermal issues. So um, e even the newest um, machines, which haven't improved quite a lot, so a Radiant chill basically um, limits the frames per second in parts of the games where it, it doesn't look that busy. So um, you know, like menus and stuff like that, it limits the uh, frames per second. So, image sharpening again, it, it's worth adding this. It does not work across all graphics cards. Um, Radiant Enhanced Sync again, it's another really good one to uh, to enable. Um, some of these might actually, you might actually lose a little bit of uh, frames per second, though. Uh, you may lose a little bit of performance. Uh, so, if you have an older chip, uh, some of those might be worth just leaving off. And if you have an old, older chip anyway, this is less likely to work, the image sharpening. Okay, so um, you're gonna ch one thing you definitely want to gonna change, if you click advanced here, um, we go down, we go down, texture filtering quality, set this to performance. Triple buffering, yeah, you probably want to switch that on. Graphics, compute, that's fine. Um, enabled, yeah, you can switch this on if you want. Um, again, some that as well, but for my M395X I'll leave this off. Um, there's a couple of other things as well so you're going to want to download um, Max Fan Control so I'll leave the link in the description. Um, the latest version also supports computers with a T2 chip so definitely download this. Um, Max Fan Control is up here so once I've opened it up um, you can see how I've set it based on GPU diode. Um, some computers will have different multiple fans, so the settings will work differently for your machine. Um, there's different video. There's a couple of videos on YouTube showing how other people set theirs for their computers. This is for M M two nine five X. So I've set it based on GPU diode, and I've got the fans kicking in pretty early, um, fifty degrees. Um, for the fans to start kicking in and then maximum temperature 60 which it'll get a lot higher than that so the fans will just go um, full blast sooner than what the Apple um, official um, firmware does um, so the idea of that is is that um, you'll get better cooling um, this is what I recommend you use first 
and there's also another program you can use called uh, Throttle Stop, um, but we won't go into the details here on that one, um, unless if you're unless if you're you know really sort of IT savvy if you uh, if you're good with computers, I would avoid using Throttle Stop because you can actually cause problems with your CPU by you by doing that. This one is safe to use though, so use Max Fan Control um, to make sure that the, the fans ramp up much sooner than the uh, stock Apple ones. Um, so you can see on the, I'm just on the desktop here and it's already sort of uh, increasing a little bit. Um, don't know if you can hear the fans on the computer. So yeah, um, once we close all that up, um, the only other thing I want to say is um, MSI Afterburner. So um, let's just see, you can download that. I mean, I'll put all the links in the description, but um, MSI Afterburner for overclocking, um, you can use this. And um, so let's just click yes. Uh, there we are, it's a tiny little screen on there. Right, so, <laughs> uh, you can see sort of the megahertz um, readout currently. Um, seems to be a little bit all over the place, so just take it with a pinch of salt. Um, what we're going to want to do is, if we click on the settings button here, you see that little cogwheel, click that. Um, unlock voltage monitoring and the other thing is extend over over extend oh, official overclock limits can't talk there uh, uh, hit apply and then it'll ask you to restart do you want to restart now yes so that's yet another restart okay so after yet another restart once you've um tick those boxes and msi afterburner um if you go to the performance tab in the gaming edition drivers uh, you should be able to go to tuning and then hit I accept and actually you can have a go at sort of tweaking um, the GPU here so you can probably have a go at changing things here it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work um, but I can you know you can certainly have a go um, changing the power limit for example um, that at least that's all enabled, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work or apply the settings. Um, similarly, under MSI Afterburner, um, yeah, again, if you go into here, you can see um, the core clock here and the memory clock. Um, you should be able to tweak all these again. It doesn't necessarily mean it'll save the uh, it'll save the changes, um, but as far as overclocking goes, um, yeah, there's you know it, 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 there's a potential for it to work quite well, particularly with some of the newer cards. Um, I've mentioned throttle stop, but I won't cover it here um, just because I've never actually used it. And for most people, actually, I recommend just use Max Fan Control. Um, to help keep your system running more more stable um, whilst you're running your games. A um, couple of questions I've had is, um, it might be something like, okay, um, so I have, a, I have a Mac Pro from 2010, uh, one user said to me, um, I've got a Vega 56 in it, do I need to install... Um, your drivers simple answer is no um, you should be able to use the official AMD drivers if you have say a Mac Mini with no integrated graphics card um, or a Mac Pro again with a, a, a standard sort of AMD graphics card that isn't um, already built into your Mac by default because um, a Mac Pro of course you can swap the GPUs out um, so, yeah, the AMD graphics cards should work fine for that. Um, if you're using an eGPU, um, you will need to be running Windows 1903. Um, again, I'll put a link in the description for that. And there's also a really good uh, website, eGPU.io, which um, discusses um, eGPU compatibility with um, Bootcamp. 
um, and ties in with the drivers that you will need. You will need these drivers um, to, to get eGPUs working in the first place. The reason for that is, is that Apple don't uh, incorporate eGPU compatibility into the into the AMD drivers themselves um, for the official ones, but I do for these modified ones. So you will need to use those. So again, you can just use any of the normal um, Adrenaline 2020 drivers um, for that. Um, what I would say is, yes, yeah, so version 1903, the latest of time of writing is actually 1909. So there's a link in the description for the I, the ISO that you can the the, the ISO that you can download um, if you want to install uh, a version of Windows that supports eGPUs. Um, and make sure you don't actually update from that version because the newer versions of Windows 10 actually break eGPU compatibility. Uh, so you will just get a yellow a yellow um, warning mark against your um, GPU in device manager so it's really not worth um, upgrading from 1903 um, yeah in terms of upgrading I've already sort of mentioned um, all you need to do um, you shouldn't really have to use device driver and installer again um, the, be the best thing you can do is to um, is to follow the instructions on this page again all the way through if you are upgrading however um, you, in theory at least, and I've had no problems with this, if you just um, open setup. Uh, go to additional options and click factory reset. Um, and then try to yeah, keep user settings if you want. And then click install. And then that should actually work in terms of upgrading from a previous version of bootcampdrivers.com. Um, so we'll cancel the installation for now. Uh, so that's pretty much it um, from what I can recall. So yeah, uh, thumbs up if you like the video. And um, please get subscribing um, to the channel. And uh, see you in the next video.